Hello, digital makers. Welcome back to Digital Making at Home. We're glad you're here. Today, we're talking about capturing images on camera. Make sure to say hello in the chat and let us know where in the world you are. I'm Mr. C, and I'm coming to you live from Cambridge in the UK. And we also have my co-host, the astounding Christina. Hi, everyone. I'm joining from Nebraska in the USA. Today's episode is all about taking pictures. We're speaking again with Al, a fellow streamer from Andorra, who is into fashion design and loves making inventions for their friends. Our friend Rob from the Magpie is also dropping by, too. And then we're going to get our Raspberry Pis out and make a time lapse camera. That sounds dope. I'm excited to do some making with you, Christina. For those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Digital Making at Home is all about getting young people to turn their ideas and creativity into reality by learning to create with tech. Every Wednesday, we chat with incredible inventors and makers from all over the world. We create cool things together and see amazing digital making projects from young people, just like we will today. We're live right now on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, and we love connecting with you. We can see your comments, so please jump in the chat, share your input ideas, and just post questions to us. Absolutely. We love getting your messages and just saying hi to our friends around the world. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. If you're on YouTube right now, click that subscribe button or you can go to rpf.io slash sub. If you're already subscribed, thank you. Subscribing to our channel means joining a global, and I mean global community. Check out the chat of young digital makers, educators, and helping us further our global mission to change the world with digital making. Come and be a part of this awesome crew. Yeah, absolutely. And shout outs to Brooke, Elias and David, some of our most recent subscribers. Thanks for joining the Raspberry Pi team. Definitely. And got to say hi to folks. Hello, Trafia, Tanisia. Great to see you again. Hello, Ali. I see Alex. Hello on Facebook. Chris in Belfast on YouTube. Hello, Nate, Omaha, Nebraska. What's up, Nate? Amazing. <laughs> Hello. It's so great. We have oh, we've got some United States folks, South Texas. We've got the Netherlands represented on YouTube. Hello, Eddie's Tech. Welcome back. So great to see you. Oh, love Canada. Felipe saying we love Raspberry Pi. We love you you Felipe we love you <laughs> hello from Germany hello Kurt oh what a great group thanks for joining so us good. yeah and I'm super excited to connect with Al because they actually emailed yeah. us to share their projects and we'll tell you more about how you can do that later shall we bring on Al and have a chat about the awesome things yeah they definitely please right. Al are you there oh, hi there we go oh my hello. god Hello, Hi. Al. Welcome. You did it. I now, got, I got off, so scared because my connection started dying and I'm like, oh, please, no, not again. No oh, worries. Not again. You're here. Now, if you're joining I us, if you, yeah, Al, this is a big deal because Al joined us a few weeks back, but we had some internet issues. So this is our second run and we've done it. Let's all take a deep breath together. We're here together. Oh, yeah, I we needed did it. <laughs> awesome. Well, Al, let's, let's jump and tell us, like, what are some of the cool things you're currently making? So um, currently, I am like more focused on making more things like because I, I oh my god, I started making things like video games, uh, web games, and like all of, all of that stuff. But now I'm more focused on doing things like uh, web pages, servers. I'm I'm actually working on a vi on on a video hosting website right now. I just need to get the domain for it. That's cool, man. And how did you start getting interested in computers and digital technology? So. I would say that practically almost my whole life, since that is practically how I started to learn to read, because my father used to work a lot on the computer, and I would just sit next to him, and, and according to him, one day I just started reading the things he was typing, and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, reading the things you're saying, why? And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, you know? And practically, pretty much it's it's like a generic type thing. My father was also like really interested in in ICT and uh, so am I practically. It's basically a fa like father like son type of situation. That's cool. And wh what languages do you use when you do your programming these days? So, like, where did you start and what do you use now? Oh, uh, so I, I, my first program was with my father on Python. It was like a number guesser game, but I mostly I do, if not um, Python for programs, HTML for like, for websites, if not. But I am trying to like not learn, but uh, master, if not JavaScript, because it is like a language that I'm really interested in. Because you can like in the things that I'm working on, you can use it on a lot of things. That's cool. And I, I hear you've made a robot. Can we see your robot? I love oh robots. yeah. Uh, so I a few. I think like last year I joined the robotics class, and and as a gift, um, one of my father's friends heard, and they got me like one of those kits where you build your own car. Uh, this part I don't know what happened. 
Oh, oh <laughs> I think. Oh, yeah. So this part, I think it's actually the Bluetooth receptor. I'm not too sure. Um, but like, I don't know what happened. I can't put it back in. So. <laughs> Well, I'm sure folks cool. at home know that feeling, definitely. <laughs> definitely. What kind of resources, Al, have helped you on your digital making journey as you learn so, about how to create all these cool things? Um, so mainly, like most of the things, whenever I have a doubt, I think like like almost everyone, I just go to Stack Overflow because I do actually, I have made an account on it because I went, hold on. Yeah. So uh, if it's, if not Stack Overflow, there was like, I have a playlist of channels that usually help me. I can share it if needed. I don't have it right now, but I can like show it at a later time. But if if not, I usually like uh, look up a, like, something not like what exactly what I need, but something similar on on places like YouTube. And if the, and I usually I I get to like some transform the code and actually get a better grip of what I'm doing. Very cool. And you love sharing your experience with us. I know that's one of the things that you're really big on. You're into streaming to do that, just like we are today. Like, what oh, sort of content do you stream? Yeah. So um, um, uh, it does depend the platform because on my Twitch channel, I stream both uh, video games and actually mixing music, which I awesome. do. That's cool. Man. With, like uh, with the mixing stuff. board my, my father got me for Christmas. And actually, I also stream music. Uh, let me share my screen for a second. I got a... A radio, a, a radio domain for live streaming on a radio that I actually made this. I, I like, I got to make it myself, myself. But there's also like programmed uh, subdomains for it. So if there's like cool. any type of music that you actually like do like, you can check it out. If, Very cool. Like, if yeah, you like. and I know you're so you're also this, into fashion, right? Can you tell us a little oh, about your yeah. passion, your passion so, for fashion design? Passion for fashion. So I do actually have a. Uh, um, so uh, about the robotics team, one of the ideas that we suggested was to make merch so that we could maybe, like, possibly make a bit of, like, you know, money off of it. And we actually did get, like, a few shirts for the day of the competition. One of them is this. Oh, wait, it's backwards. Hold on. <laughs> there you go. Oh, neat! Oh, so, uh, the text is on Spanish, but, like, the joke is that our, our team name is called Andromeda, and the text uses a lot of Andromeda. <laughs> and the other one, which is right here. Uh, is like a better view of the logo. Oh, I love that. Mucho Andromeda. Actually, I love I, that. I got, I got it just in. If you can like put the screen up, uh, put the screen up. Uh, because like I wear, I wear a lot of headbands. And I'm like, hey, I should make a store of it. And I actually just got the domain. I'm, I, I have a headband. Nice. Thing. And I actually do have the face mask too because I personally on social media as well. I actually do uh, cover my face up with a mask, to uh, not only for like face protection because I don't actually. Uh, want to show my face but also to kind of like share the message of you know we're in a pandemic cover your face yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's really cool so that is like essentially uh, because it uh, but because it also kind of defines my image on social media as well yeah so, man you're such a mogul like you've got so many streams going on you've got your digital radio you've got your fashion you've got all these things it was so good to have you on today al it was Brilliant. Thank you very much for coming along. Thank you all. You did yeah. it. Thank you. Hope to see you again soon. Finally. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Al makes such good things. I love seeing someone that's like their radio to yeah, fashion, yeah, yeah. to making video games, to streaming Holy and math. sharing. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So great. So great. And just like to share with folks that you love and what you, what you're passionate about. Speaking of sharing, we've got another friend of the show with us this episode. Rob Z is back to show us a list of his favorite camera projects from the Magpie. Rob, you there? Hello. Yes, hey, I'm there. Well. Hello, Mr. C. Hello, Christina. How are you doing? <laughs> Great, great. Welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you here. Now, we reached out because we wanted to hear from Rob. Like, what are some of the coolest, uh, like, camera projects? So let's hop over to you and see. Absolutely, yes. Uh, no, we have covered some amazing camera projects in the Magpie uh, and online as well. Uh, and our first one is this one, the iPi IR camera. Uh, now, it looks a bit simple, but it's very, very cool. And instead of using a normal camera module, it uses one of the IR ones. So the pictures it takes are kind of these really surreal kind of pinky pictures that kind of really pick out on kind of the warmer temperatures uh, of the surroundings. Um, you know, I did this years ago with the, the, the creator, but uh, the, the images from it just really have always stuck in my mind and um, really, uh, kind of, oh, they're, they're stunning, they're striking, they're great, aren't they? And it's a very simple build, just uh, with the camera stuck to the 
back of a, uh, a case, a very simple case with a uh, simple yellow button to take the photos. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, as well as that, we've got this fantastic 3D camera. Now, this was actually a tutorial in the Magpie, and you can find it online if you just Google 3D camera Magpie. Uh, this is two of the newer high-quality cameras, uh, and you can see that they're connected to a Raspberry Pi Zero each. Now, these will take simultaneous images uh, to create like a 3D image. So with this image here of two uh, uh, teddy bears, I can't remember the name of them now, it's our teddy bear. <laughs> um, uh, if you do like a kind of a magic eye cross-eyed thing, you can uh, kind of turn it into a 3D image. Um, now you can do other kinds of processing to it. So it works with the old red and blue anaglyph stereoscopic glasses that you got. Um, and uh, that's a bit easier on the eye, so I suggest you do that. Babbage the Bear, that's his name. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, but yes, uh, the camera needs to be very specific um, distance apart, and because only one camera can be connected to a Raspberry Pi, you need to have two kind of running in sync uh, with a little Python script, which uh, we talk about in the article. Uh, next, we have the All Seeing Pi. Now, this is actually a foundation project, and if you've ever been to the offices or been to an official event, you may have seen this. It's quite simply a photo booth, but you can also add stickers to it, like these wonderful glasses that I got. Unfortunately, I do not own those in real life. Um, and uh, then you can post it to the All Seeing Pi Twitter account, the All Seeing Pi. And uh, it gives you a little bit of a tag, kind of where you are. And uh, oof, apparently I've got some floral swagger going on there as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, I, I guess you won't be seeing it at the moment. But uh, as soon as events are back up, hopefully it'll come back out. And obviously Matt is rocking that cowboy hat. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so otherwise, we have this seeing one. Now this, when I first saw this, it kind of blew me away. Uh, it has a camera in the end of the little plastic tube and you can point it in something press a button and it will use like microsoft ai stuff to try and determine what you're looking at and then using the speaker fat it will then say it success rate isn't amazing but uh you know if you point at a tree and press a button it will very likely say tree at you uh i believe there's some uh video of it uh, saying cap as well um, but yeah, I, I thought it was amazing when I first saw it, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, the technology is even better now, so it would be amazing to do again. Finally, we have probably one of my favorite projects, and uh, we've got a bit of video to show it off for us, that'd be great. <laughs> So, a Pokedex, a real-life working Pokedex. Now, as a kid, uh, we had a little toy that was similar to this kind of Pokedex, but it didn't have a camera. You just had to plug in the number, and then it would show you, like, a, a Charmander, you know, 004 for Charmander, I believe. <laughs> um, and uh, But it didn't have a camera. And now, here's a camera that can look at Pokemon for you. Now, it's been trained on hundreds of pictures of each of the different Pokemon, so that it can, with certainty... Uh, identify a Bulbasaur or a Charmander. Uh, now that does take a while, so <laughs> when this originally was made, it could only really uh, uh, identify the original three starters, Squirtle, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and I think Pikachu, because that's quite easy. Uh, but yes, like with, with more information and more time, you can make it be able to recognize all 891, I think there are now, Pokemon. So, you know, it's, it's a great use of what we call computer vision, which is machine learning, which makes use of the camera to uh, identify stuff. Uh, and you also use it in robots for bits and pieces. And it's really just a, an amazing use of, of the camera and Raspberry Pi. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, that that is what we have for these issues. Loved it. Well, the Pokedex, <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> I love a day when Pokemon comes up. It's always it's always the best. Rob, thank Jeez, you yeah. so much for sharing those and putting this together. I'm thank seeing you. like excitement in the chat. Um, well, how can the audience, how can our friends at home get in touch with you and let you know that they've made something cool? Well, if you've got a cool camera project or really any cool Raspberry Pi project, please email us at magpie.raspberrypi.com. You can see it on the screen down there. Was my fingers going there? My fingers going. Um, <laughs> MagpieRaspberryPi.com. 
uh, you know, I love seeing the stuff that you make. Um, and if I can, I can put it in the magazine. Yes, I've got this amazing power to do that. Um, and even share it on Twitter if you've got a Twitter account. But uh, that's, very cool. that's another thing. That's great. Oh, well, thanks for coming along today, Rob. It was great to have you again. We'll have you back soon, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Catch you later. Bye, Rob. Bye. Wow, some really great camera projects in there from Rob. Some like really clever folks. I love that AI real life recognition camera. That is a cool idea. Yeah. And I know today's like project is a great one for anyone interested in getting started with the Pike camera. So I've got my digital making box. What do I need to, nice. <laughs> to pull out of here to get started? You don't need a lot for this one at all. All you need is your Raspberry Pi. Uh, if it's okay. not a three or a four, you'll need like a Wi-Fi dongle. And got it. Oh, you I've got one because I'm fancy in. Uh, and then the Pi camera, and that's all you really need. This is a really simple one. I'm going to build a time-lapse camera today. So uh, for those people at home who haven't seen a, a time-lapse before and they're not quite sure what it is, basically you take a lot of photos over a very long period of time, and you take all of those photos and turn them into frames in a video. And then we watch that video, and you can watch things happen very quickly that should take a long time. So you can see here, this is a video uh, that we made with some crest growing. You see it grows, grows, grows. You see the time stamp at the top telling us what the time is as the photo is taken. Oh, wow. Yeah, this was last month. Looking great. Oh, that's really neat because it, it makes it seem like a fit, like a, a film just because, it, but it's all of those photos. So it's important. And you exactly. can also see like, the light changing, which is like, oh no, it's dying. We got the yeah. full life cycle. And there it goes. Cool. So that's what a time lapse so is. Many it's a, it's, 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 there's something like about that. I'm seeing the whole life cycle of that plant, right. like the connection to it, right? I feel you. But, uh, so if you've got that stuff, then that's all you really need. So I'm VNC'd into my Raspberry Pi, which is set up in my shed uh, at the moment. So it's got a Pi camera on it, an IR camera. So I really like IR cameras. Um, I find them useful for all sorts of things, especially like outdoor applications if you're using them at night. Having an IR camera, and Rob was showing us those ones earlier with the IR cameras, you get that really pink weird photo which you'll see today you'll see all the photos that i take when i show you oh, cool. pink, but that's because it's an ir camera so it's got a different filter and it lets different wavelengths of light in and you can do different things with it but uh, it's really good for night vision is the application i've got and i see you've got so, a cool case is that one of those 3d printed cases that i've seen you make before yeah yeah yeah. Uh, so, yeah i 3d print those and it's like a little file that i can tinker so now that i have that 3d file i can just go into tinkercad if i need to like attach it to a raspberry pi case so the parking bot in the raspberry pi cambridge office that was just that camera thing tinkered into another 3D shape, and then I just 3D printed the whole thing. It was very really, like knocked together, but it works. I'm sure I'll make something prettier eventually. But uh, nice. if you've got, I, that's it. If you can see that, that what you see there in that photo, that's all the rig you need: a camera and a pie, and we're ready to go. Let's do it. Done. All right. So connect your camera to your pie. You'll see about halfway down the pie, there is a connector here. Okay, that's your camera connector. That one there. You want to connect to this one here in the middle. It even says camera on it if you look close enough. Now, Christina, you see you've got a shiny side and a blue side on your ribbon? Yes. Yeah, the shiny side faces away from the little tab that you pop up. So when you pop it up, don't pull it off, right? It's this little tab here, and it's very dinky. So you want to mm. be careful when you lift it up, you don't want to pull it off. This little tab here is very wobbly. If it comes up and it feels right. like a wobbly tooth, perfect. So slide your ribbon in, making sure it's nice and level, and the shiny side away from the tab, and then just pop both sides of the clip down. Now, yesterday, okay. I spent about half an hour working out why my Raspberry Pi wasn't doing a thing with my camera, and it's literally because one side of that clip was not pressed down properly. It was telling me my camera wasn't working, it wasn't initiated, uh, so I've ended up fixing that problem, but it took me a little while. So make sure when you do it that both sides of that clip are pushed down and your cable is nice and level. Just check to see that you can see a little strip of silver bits coming out of the connector, and they should all be the same length. Got it. Perfect. Or it might be, am I on the right side? Or having it is the blue facing the audio jack? Uh, yes, the blue should be facing the audio jack. That is correct. Yes, awesome. That's it. Perfect. Nice. So now that you've got that, you can power up your Raspberry Pi. Don't ever connect your camera with the power on. That way is like the best way to kill cameras. And we used to run workshops and we lost loads and loads of cameras to not having them connected properly, having them disconnected properly. So do be careful with your camera boards, they are sensitive bits of kit. So once you've got it connected up to your Pi. The next part you'll need to do is write the code. Um, and so the code is a bit of Python. So I'll do that here, like that new interface. And that will just pop up. All right. I love script. using Python. Yeah, me and too. And for folks um, joining us today, let us know what projects you've made. If you've made a Raspberry Pi camera project, feel free to like put it in the chat, let us know. Or if you have ideas for a Raspberry Pi camera project, let us know what you're thinking. 
And I see John said, Magpie is my pie magazine of choice. We're also big fans, John. Thanks for sharing. All right. And you're putting in your code. Yeah. So uh, I'm doing my imports, right? So if you remember last time we spoke about it as well with our Python, there are three sections to every Python script. There's the imports at the top. Right, there's the setup in the middle, and then there's the execution at the bottom. So right now I'm doing my imports. Again, I'm telling them my pies. I'm going to throw some commands at you about Pi Camera, about time. If you don't go and get the dictionaries for those words, you won't know what I'm talking about. So go do that now. That's the first thing we tell it to do. Okay, so these are the three things I want. I want Pi Camera to control my camera. That's my library for making the camera work. Time, obviously, so that I can make it stop and go using like increments of seconds. And date time, because I want to put a timestamp on my video that you saw in the Crest video you saw at the top, and it told you what the time was. Uh, and I want that in there just so that, because it's a cool thing to have, right? So you know what it was and give you that sense of relativity of the video. So we'll do all those. So that's our imports. The next bit is the setup. So what variables am I using? What things am I going to have to refer to in my script? So the first thing I'm going to have to refer to is my camera. Uh, and I'm going to call, so I want to say camera, my camera, whoop, typo, watch those. Can I watch okay, those? So <laughs> I'm saying whenever I use the word camera in my script from now, what I'm really saying is pi camera in those brackets. Okay, so that's my uh, method that I'm going to use. And then I want camera dot resolution. And I want that. So, so this here, I'm going to set my video and I want it to be 1920 by 1080. Uh, so that's the res that the video will come out at. And I need to put a bit in there. Here, okay. Oh, neat. Michael has a home automation system on Raspberry Pi. Um, also seeing Daniel joining us on Facebook from Chile. Hello, bienvenidos, Daniel. Oop, forever, gotta love a wild true. Yeah, totally. So um, we use that wild true loop because it just means once I start this script, I want you to go forever. Uh, okay, so, and this one here, I'm setting up my timestamp now inside my loop. Have a think about why I wouldn't set my timestamp up in my setup, which is what I would regularly tell people to do, right? Like I tell you, if I'm going to use a variable, put it in your setup. Why would I put it in the loop, do you think? Mm. Have a look at what I'm setting it to. Setting it for date and time. Well, I imagine it's because you want it to run. Or, hmm, I'm not sure, actually. I'm curious without the answer. Okay, so let's see if anybody in the chat knows. If I see if they can throw us a comment, and otherwise uh, I'll come back to it in a minute. But see if you know at home, why would I put my timestamp variable inside the loop? Why would I want it to be in there? Why is that important? And then I'm going to put in here the format that I want it to spit my timestamp back at me. Uh, so I'm going to ask it for the day in a number. Okay, so I could give it a day which is different. It's capital A, and that means that I get the day like it would say Tuesday. Don't mm, want that. Okay. I just want it to be the day number, right? And then because that way it's better for numer like numerating my files. If you have okay. Tuesday at the beginning, then that would not be you know compatible with sort of uh, an alphabetization that we would want. But the number always works off the, off the bat every time. So using the numbers uh, and then the month. So day, month, and then I want the year. Okay, capital Y for like the whole works of the year. And uh, then I want the time as well. So I want the hours. I want the minutes and I want the seconds uh, of my timestamp. And so that's the format it's going to give it back to me. It's going to check what the time is now and it's going to spit it out to me in that format. And we can see Kostakis is saying in the chat that it updates every loop and that is exactly why. Because as it flips back around again, I want it to check the time every time it takes a photo and use that new time as my timestamp. So I put it in my loop so that as it comes around again, it will go bang. Out it comes, bang, out it comes, and I get the time every time my loop re right, refreshes itself. Cool. Got it, got well it. Done, Thanks, team. folks. Excellent work. And so now the next bit is to actually take the photo, so camera.capture, and then where do I want to put that photo? So inside these brackets, I tell it where do I want to send the photo. So I'm going to use an F string, and I'm going to tell it I want it to go to home slash pi slash time lapse. Remind me to make the folder time lapse because I don't have it yet. Uh, and then I want it to be a timestamp, and then, ooh, not timestamp, that's not going to help me, dot JPEG, and then close that. Cool. That's my string. So that's where it's going to send it. So I'm going to send it to home slash pi slash time lapse, and then name the file timestamp.jpg. So what I need to do is I don't have the folder time lapse, so before I do any more, 
I'm going to make that okay. folder here. Okay, so you can do it like this, and I'm just going to call it uh, time lapse. And now I have the folder for it to put my pictures in. Cool. So we can Great. open this. All right, we've got a question. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can pull it up. Um, might need to turn the camera on in Pi or made a suggestion. Mr. See, okay. Might need to turn the camera on in Pi config. That's a good point, right? So I know that's a really good point to bring up because I know that I have already set it up in mine. Okay, so it's a thing that I've done. I know the camera is instantiated and I have access to it. But it's a really good point. So I'll show you guys how to do that if you haven't at home. So we go to start and then we come across here to preferences and we come down here to Raspberry Pi configuration. You can also do it in your terminal by typing sudo raspberry config, but this is the nice GUI version. And then we come across to interfaces, which are all the things that our camera, the way, sorry, the way we can interact with our Pi, right, interfaces. And so camera here, I have it enabled. I've also got SSH and VNC enabled, which is how I'm able to show you my screen, even though my Pi is out inside in the shed. Um, and all the other ones, I've got all these things that I use. So make sure that your camera says enabled in the little radio button, click OK, and all of this will work absolutely fine. Yeah, thanks for bringing that what up, John. Yeah, it's a really good point. Well done, John. And so we've got here our camera.capture. Where am I sending my photo? Sending it to the folder that I just created. And then every three seconds, do the same thing. All right. So I'm going to take a photo every three seconds. I could change my sleep depending on how often I wanted my frames to go. So if I change that to 60, then it would take one every minute. I could change it to like 0 0.5 and it would take one every half a second. It depends on what you're trying to do with it. But three, it's pretty good. 20 photos, it's like about 20 frames, uh, you know, per minute is... When you condense it down, it works pretty good. So that, let's see, what else can we do with it? Uh, if I run that now, we should get a little preview. It'll ask me to save, and then I'll get a little preview of my, let's call it T-Lapse. Okay, so that's a picture from outside of my shed. You can see my little um, chives growing in my Hulk tiki there <laughs> and my chili plants. Uh, so. <clears throat> oh, is that live, Mr. C? Yeah, yeah, that's live. That's live <laughs> in my shed. Uh, that's happening outside right now. And you can see the weird pink tint to the photo because it's mm -hmm. an infrared camera. And you can see that it's taking a photo uh, every three seconds. It's going boff, boff, boff. It's just doing that for me. Okay, so. <laughs> is it is that laundry over there too? Yes, Brian? yeah, that's, it is laundry day. Yeah, I think that's all indie stuff. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I can stop that now. So I'll stop the preview from coming up and I can go back to my code. That's cool. Um, but one thing I forgot to do was to annotate my text. I didn't put the text in. Uh, I forgot to tell it, which is kind of looking at going, where's the thing that I told it to do? Where's my text telling what the time is? So let's put that in. Uh, camera dot annotate text. Oops, that's a typo. Spelling, yep. Thank you. Uh, typos galore today. Uh, annotate text, and then we want another S. This means you're human. So, thanks. Yeah, what should we call this time lapse? What would the title of our time lapse be? Tiki. Tiki, yeah, <laughs> cool. Uh, Hulk Tiki. Oh, I like that. Hulk Tiki. Yeah. And then we'll bring back in our timestamp. There's our timestamp there, and then we end our string. Cool. So we should get Hulk Tiki timestamp when I run that now, uh, and we'll see what the code looks like. So run. Show me, there it is, Hulk Tiki. Oh, that's really small. No, boo. I'm going to make it bigger. <laughs> boo. No good. Boo. Make it bigger. Okay, uh, let's see. We want... And we had a question, Come Mr. C, on YouTube about the um, the the timestamp, but having the order of, like, the date, month, and year. Can you make it any order you want, or does it have to be that order of date, so month, year? You can spit it out in any order you want. You can mix and match those as long as you put those in the order you want. Inside that string that is how it will present those results to you. So you can mix and match those, put them around, and it will stringify them all for you, which is what that STRF time is. That's stringifying the time. And so you define that string however you want it to be. Yeah. Uh, so for you, I say you might put it month, date, year, if you prefer year, date. Or Mr. Totally C's in the UK, good. so that's why he put date, month. <laughs> totally, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. To be honest, for this sort of thing. Um, Thank you, Eddie's Tech, can, for answering that yeah. question in the chat for our community. Thank you. That's great. I love it. The audience jumping in, helping us out. It's really good. Uh, so I'm going to make the text bigger. I didn't like how big that text was. It was lame. So I'm going to tell it camera.annotate text size 50. I mean, I could make it way bigger, but... 50 will probably be fine. Let's test that. Show me the shed. There it is, bigger. And it's showing me the time. And I'll take another one. There we go. Every three seconds, you'll notice the time. It takes oh, neat. Time. oh, cool. Yeah. Oh. All right, 11th. Next one should be 14. 15. Whoops. 
<laughs> fractions of fractions of a second, right? Where they put in the time. Right. You know, 18. <laughs> they put probably yeah. There we go. Cool. Okay. All right. We've got a question here also on YouTube. What does the F before the strings stand for? It seems to happen when you want to include a variable in the string. Uh, to be honest, setting an F string is just best practice. It's a thing to do. To be, I don't technically know the reason for running an F string if I'm 100% honest, but it's the thing that I was taught to do every time I write a string, you put the F in. Um, Mark, the guy who is like my absolute guru for programming, he's the guy that tells me you write F strings. It's just the best way to do it. If anybody in the chat knows why an F string, please, Educate me. I would love to know why we put an F. I just know it because it means that my code doesn't mess up, right? That's right, why I right, do it. Yeah. Sometimes I'm you a very practical know. programmer. Like I'm not like I'm not a cerebral programmer. I know the programming that I know because I've had to like hack a thing together and like cobble other people's tools into something that works. Um, so F strings I was always taught, and it's always been the practice that I've used, and it has always worked out for me. So I stuck with it. I'm seeing. I think it's giving uh, formatting options. It helps with formatting options. That's what. I am seeing Ooh. that folks are saying cool. so. Cool. I guess when my programming gets complex enough to require more formatting options for my <laughs> strings, then I will need to understand that. But right now, I just know it works. So I just like dump it in there. The F string is the way to go. I've always been told that. Um, and so if you want to know how to turn this thing, now that we have all these photos, and so I can show you, right? Like if we run the code again, and then I bring up this time lapse folder, or oh, that's going to be hard to see because it's uh, behind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got it. Which is a little frustrating. OK. Okay, and then you can see here it's popping all these pictures in, all right? So, yeah. Oopsie. wait, is there something behind the Hulk? <gasps> what is that? Do you see that? Go back. Oh, that be my that might be my cat Tiger Lily. Oh my gosh, right there over the <laughs> hiding. Yeah, I see her. She's a. Oh, wow. That, we just caught something. That's so cool. She's done. They're wildlife photography now. It's now right? wildlife photography. Yeah. It's a wildlife cam. Very cool. So, yeah, we could run it again and see what's going on. So, yeah, no, that, that's a live shot of my shed. So, I guess if we wait long enough, we might see tigers come past again. Or the boys might kick a football or something soon. Anyway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Mr. C, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was really fun and really appreciate oh, it. I, it was I'm like thinking about how I can make my own time lapse video now. Well, that's the thing. And it's really fun to work on a time lapse project. And like you saw, it doesn't take long to get something up and running. And like if you run that code every time you boot your Pi, you could just go and set it up outside with power. You wouldn't need to have it on the Wi Fi like I've got it. That's not a problem. Um, and then if you wanted to turn it into a movie, there are a couple of ways you can do it. But if you go on the project site and have a look at the Cress Egghead project, it has a really nice little command you can throw into your command line that will make it into an animated GIF for you. Uh, and so you just type this command in uh, and it will run all of your photos into an animated GIF that you can just post anywhere. You can send it on like, you know, WhatsApp, Signal, uh, whatever it is that you want to do with. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed tonight's show, everybody. It was so great to see so many of you getting involved in the chat. Like, I love it when people teach me something when I do the live stream. Uh, shout outs to Judah, to Chris, uh, so our boy Larry B in the chat again, everybody. It was really great to have everybody jumping on. Thank you all. And thank you to Al for trying to join us again this evening. It was so good that we had them in and it was it worked for us the second time around. We'll have Al on again soon. Yes. And thank you also to Rob for joining us and sharing Rob's favorite uh, camera projects this week. Love that. Now, I know we're all inspired to try out some more camera projects. Well, don't worry. We've got you covered. We have a library of hundreds of coding projects. And Mr. C had just mentioned the Crest project. You can go to rpf.io slash camera to see all the photography projects. You can also just go to projects.raspberrypi.org org check them out and let us know what you think if you make a cool project you can email us at dmah at raspberrypi.org and maybe join a future episode yes we would love to have you on to show us the things that you've made thank you all for being here for the raspberry pi foundation's digital making at home live stream this week we'll be back again next week with more digital making until then stay safe and healthy and i'll see you next time catch you see later, later. bye